Let's talk a little bit more about the reality affecting and uh, presenting to people who work in our emergency rooms. This is Dr. Noor Khatib, and she works in two hospitals in the greater Toronto area. So much of her story touches on so many of the storylines in the coronavirus pandemic. So we're just delighted to welcome her to our program. Hi, Dr. Khatib, and good morning. Hi, Heather. Thanks for having me. Good you morning. were listening in to me talk about the Mount Sinai drills, and I know we're going to show some pictures that you sent in to us. You also have been running drills that resemble those. Tell me a little bit about that experience and the value of running uh, that kind of drill in your view. Absolutely. Um, my colleagues and I have been running simulations or drills, COVID simulations, to make sure that we're lessening our anxiety and the, other, the nurses, the RTs, and everyone's anxiety. And I think it's been really helping. At least now, this—I mean, this this virus was foreign to us, and at least now we know we know how to we know how to prepare for it. We know what's coming in, and uh, these drills have really made a big difference. And like you said, like like was mentioned by my colleague, is the volumes are down, so we have some time to prepare for this. I want to talk about those volumes being down in just a second, but uh, these are simulations, as you say. Of course, we know that. The real thing is already happening in Canada's hospitals, maybe not the peak number yet, but it's already happening and it's already a huge concern. So what are you seeing in your hospitals, the two hospitals in which you work uh, for real these days? So we're seeing, although low numbers, we're seeing very high acuity. People are coming in very sick, whether it's COVID related or not, they're coming in quite sick. Um, and we're trying to make sure that we're prepared for that using the simulations. Um, my concern is even non-COVID cases are coming in quite sick. And um, I'm concerned that people are coming in at the end stage of their disease, meaning they're so fearful of coming to the emergency department that they're waiting till the end. So a good example of that is when you have appendicitis, your stomach hurts and it hurts so bad that you go seek attention, you go seek medical attention. And nowadays we're seeing people come in with their appendix not just inflamed but burst because they've waited so long. Um, so I just want to urge people that just, I understand, I thank you for, you know, physical distancing. I don't like the term social distancing because we should always stay connected, but we need to be physically distant. Um, but if you are having the crushing chest pain, the trouble breathing where you can't take a few, we can't speak a few words, those are reasons to come to the eMERGE. We're seeing appendices that are perfed, meaning that they're, they're, they're burst because they've been waiting so long. So that is an aspect of, of the current crisis that we haven't talked much about. I think you're quite right in raising it, Dr. Khatib, that people, I, I'm, I'm listening to you and thinking that people's outcomes may be negatively affected because they waited too long for other non-COVID illnesses to seek attention sure. because they don't want to go to the hospital or they don't want to bother the doctors who are already so occupied. Is that what you're suggesting we may see as a, as a result? It's very concerning. It, it, we are seeing it. Um, instead of people coming in with chest pain, they're coming in pulseless. Um, and instead of people coming in with a blood clot in their leg, they're coming with a blood clot already going to their lungs. So I just, if, if you have a medical concern or emergency, seek medical attention. Try to connect you with your family doctor virtually. Or if it's bad enough, please seek medical attention. We're here. We're open. We're ready to serve you. Um, and we, you know, we don't want to see you at the end stage of your illness when it's harder to treat. Such an important message um, for those not sure what to do. We often get questions in when we have an expert doctor in to answer viewer questions and they're just not sure when they should present. This is an important uh, reminder to them. I want to bring in some pictures of you in full PPE. Uh, in your situation, we've talked so much, Dr. Khatib, about how there is not an adequate supply and what a terrible situation it is for the doctors and nurses and the frontline health care workers. What's your personal story? H have you been affected by a shortage? So we have PPE right now, but there's always this fear that we won't have it later. And later is when it counts, right? Um, we're seeing these cases now, but we know they're coming and we're, they're coming in volumes in, in the future. So that's when we need our PPE. And it's concerning, it's concerning. I actually, so I, I, I had a career before medicine and finance and I went into medicine and I can't imagine that, it, I would never have imagined that I'm gonna be part of this pandemic and, and, and here at this time. But at the same time, we, and I didn't sign up to be martyrs right? We can easily treat people with COVID. We can not easily treat, sorry. We can easily care for people with COVID safely, right? If we had the correct equipment. We didn't sign up to be martyrs. That is such a strong statement um, in terms of 
it sounds like you're just being left to be exposed and to be potentially infected by all of that. Is that the feeling that you have in terms of that you've just been left to your own devices? Without PPE, we are exposed. Um, without PPE, we are exposed. We, we would love to care for these people. Our passion for medicine is there. We want to care for everyone, but we need the right equipment. Simply because we can't see this virus doesn't mean that it's not there. I want to bring in a picture because it, you haven't been affected by the shortage yet, as you told us and as we saw in your pictures, but here's what you have in case. Can you explain your backup kit? Uh, sure. Um, so that, like, kind of welder's face shield, uh, it's more for me, so I'd stop touching my face during the shift. Um, and then uh, I have a backup, let's say, uh, mask, uh, it, it, just in case the N95s are, are finished and I'm doing an aerosolizing procedure, a procedure where you actually need the N95 masks. Uh, I've got the uh, goggles there, but those are those are not backup. Those are ones that I that I am using, so they're protecting uh, they're protecting my eyes from any um, any uh, airborne COVID that's in the air while I'm doing a certain procedure. So it's not um, it's not all the time. Not all the time, but you're uh, taking the best care possible. As I speak to you, just just a, just a quick last word. I mean, you you chose this a second career. You're speaking to me, and I feel like you're very even about things right now. But, but boy, with the f uncertainty, and I don't know if there's fear, but h how are you doing facing this greatest public health crisis in a generation? Uh, I'm, I'm doing okay. The support of friends, family, and especially colleagues, um, I feel like it's brought us all together even closer. Uh, we keep my colleagues, like, we've all been checking in on each other, and... And uh, I would say our simulations that we're creating or the drills is to, is to lessen our own anxieties and our colleagues' anxieties as well. Well, you have the thoughts of the whole country, uh, the thoughts and the, and the good wishes of, of so many. And uh, we'll keep in touch with you, Dr. Khatib, if we could, because you've raised such uh, important issues for us that we want to uh, follow up with you. So thank you and good luck with your work today if you're heading in for a shift. And we appreciate the time this morning. Dr. Noor Khatib, who's with us from Toronto.